And now, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PrennerCast. Yes, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. How well did that go down? We talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if we want to. Visit us online at printermedia.tv. Welcome, everyone, to the 100th episode of PrennerCast. This one's pretty special because not only is it me, Dom Goucher, and him, Pete Williams. Hi, Pete. Hey, mate. How's things? But it's everybody else as well. We are live. We are running a live show today. Uh, Not quite the live studio audience, but the next best thing. We've got a load of people on on a a go-to webinar with us. Um, People from the Brunner community have joined us on the show. And, um, yep. People are already typing in the uh, the questions in the question box. Hi to uh, to people who are typing in the question box. Great to have you here live with us. So, Pete, one hundred shows. It's been a crazy ride, isn't it? It's sort of been what almost two. What's it mean? Fifty two weeks a year. We've had a couple of years. We've had episodes not every week. So it's probably about two, almost two and a half years now. Yeah, it's been wow. going on a while. Yeah. That actually is crazy. I actually had I know, thinking we we were reaching 100 episodes. I never actually sat back and thought, timeline, how long had that actually been? And, yeah, it would have been early 2011 we started, I think. Yep. yep. Wow. It was, um, you know, I mean, it was uh, it was something that we were, we were trying out to see how we got on with it. Uh, we weren't sure what was going to happen, how it was going to go. And, uh, yeah, it's worked out really well. Mm. Uh, in fact, someone's put in the chat for us more than two years of great stuff. Thank you for that comment. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, um, we, we started uh, this off. The important thing is that we've enjoyed it, haven't we? Sorry, what was that? We've enjoyed it. I had a great time you know, catching up with you on a yeah. weekly basis, you know, talking crap and, you know, sharing thoughts and experiences and stuff like that. And it's, it's been crazy because when we started this, we, we recorded a handful of episodes before even releasing it to the world because we didn't want to actually start something and then drop the ball six weeks later like so many people do. So we had about five or six episodes in the can, as they say, uh, and then uh, decided to, to release them out. And it's, uh, it's been really cool. So obviously we're, we no longer have a lot of um, episodes in the can for future release. We're sort of back on sort of um, one-to-one at the moment, but no doubt we'll, uh, we'll get that sort of uh, – buffer happening shortly and uh it's going to be cool we've got some some cool stuff planned for the next uh two and a half years at least which is uh very fun it is uh, but when what i find interesting i was uh, as always we were looking today at the comments on preneurmedia.tv which is the currently the home of the podcast as a website it were um Obviously, you can get to the podcast through iTunes and lots of other places, but preneurmedia.tv is where you can download the files, you can get the transcripts and things like that, and you can also reach out to us and leave us a comment on there in lots of different ways. And I was looking through the comments, and we regularly get new listeners, regularly, and we get great feedback from new listeners who find us and then go back to the beginning and go and start again. And, And I'm getting a lot of feedback from people that are working their way through like this, the, the previous 99 episodes. So I thought it would be a little, a little bit interesting to just kind of have a quick review of, well, typical question, what was your favourite episode from the first 100 episodes, Pete? Well, do you know what? Let, let's do this, actually. I, I think it's a great question. Uh-huh. I've definitely got some I'd love to chat about. But while you and I share our favourite episodes, why don't we actually ask our live studio audience? Um, so guys and, and girls who are listening, love to hear your feedback on the favorite topics we've spoken about, favorite episodes. So throw them into the, the chat box here and, uh, we'll, we'll cover it off in a moment. Love to hear what your favorite episode was. Um, for me, uh, there's probably been a few in terms of interviews and stuff, you know, obviously that's been a lot of fun. Um, I'd probably say that the three or four best interviews that I've been able to uh, do based on um, the, the podcast is obviously, you know, Tim Ferriss, uh, love Tim, love to chat with him anytime we can. And obviously getting him on the show was fantastic. Uh, Robert Green, the author of Mastery, um, was a fantastic conversation, really enjoyed that. And we've kept in contact uh, quite a bit since then and had dinner here in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago when he was in town, which was fantastic. Uh, same with Ryan Holiday as well, who we had on the show, author of Trust Me, I'm Lying 
which I think is a must-read book for any marketer. Uh, Ryan and I have, have kept in touch quite a bit and, and doing some stuff at the moment. Uh, and then also a guest we had on the show, which, you know, it wasn't really a, a business-focused um, interview necessarily, it was Rich Roll, author of Finding Ultra. Um, we've kept in touch a lot and caught up for, for some runs around um, the canyons of LA when I've been in town and um, helping him with some advice on, on sort of monetizing his message about plant-based diet and I've sort of adopted more of that uh, in my lifestyle. So that was a, a really uh, great conversation that sort of, you know, sparked some friendships for me, which is obviously a, a great benefit for me personally. But I think those four interviews were probably the, the most well-received and most downloaded as well, which is really cool. Uh, Don, was any sort of particular interviews that you, you, you did yourself or, or heard that you liked? Well, well, you know, the recent interview with uh, Karosh Dini was really the first one that I did. Um, you know, I'd done a couple of, at the beginning, it was the first one I did for a very, very long time. You know, you've been the main source of the interviews, you being the, the uh, international man of mystery, as it were, um, friend to the stars and all that. Um, I have to say that one of my personal favourites um, and, and this, this is actually being reflected in, in the, the questions. I'm hoping you can see this coming through. But yeah. One of my personal favorites, people might be surprised by this, was the Seven Levers, <laughs> original Seven Levers episode. And the reason was, if you listen to that episode, I'm quite excited on the episode. And folks, I hope you, I hope you can appreciate that, that this is all genuine stuff. We genuinely are interested in the people that we talk to. We genuinely believe in the topics that we discuss. Um, and I... When I when I first, when you first came to me with that idea, I'd never come across it before, and I was just so excited. It was such a great idea, and it's grown and grown from that one episode. You know, we got such great feedback on the first episode and the second episode. You know, we we, we went ahead and even you know built built the home study course based upon it because mm. we got such great feedback. But that was one of the big episodes for me personally, um, and and also. Uh, I think I mean, it was just a little bit of a vanity thing, but but when you were when you were approached by Tim Ferriss, um, and you interviewed Tim Ferriss for the podcast, I thought that was great, um, and that really did start this this increase in the the the, the, the authors that approaches. Well, that's a really um, cool thing. It just showed, it, yeah, it, it really showed to me, and I think I think it showed to the audience the power of creating something as simple as a podcast you know i mean this really is just basically it's a phone call between you you and me every week right yep absolutely um, that we re that we record but it's gone on for 100 episodes is over two years worth of content and now you know we're we are being approached by these authors um and i'm just i'm, I'm really proud of what we've done yeah i i absolutely too and i, I think it's a, a big testament to the listeners who obviously are you know the the lifeblood of the show who listen regularly and download the podcast while they're driving to work or out running or, you know, cleaning the house and things like that. We've heard some crazy stories and, you know, it's good to have got such a, a big community uh, uh, here around the podcast and, and preneur marketing in that we can now throw our collective weight around. And I've mentioned this on some previous episodes, but when authors and publishers come to us now to sort of say, hey, we'd love to be on the show, I want to make sure they can give us something that the audience gets beyond just some cool information in a conversation. So we now have that regular contest happening. So if you haven't checked out uh, preneurmarketing.com forward slash win, preneurmarketing.com forward slash win, we have uh, an ongoing contest there that changes every week. And so, so make sure you check it regularly and re-enter because you need to enter every time there's a new contest. But we're getting books and recordings and, and really cool stuff from these publishers and authors that come on the show that you guys can actually win and we'll send them to you personally. We'll cover the cost of postage and all that sort of stuff. Um, so make sure you actually, you know, check out that site and, and you know, en enter regularly for different books and downloads and physical stuff being sent to you because, you know, we make sure that, you know, we have this power now as a collective that, you know, we're pushing on, on your behalf. You know, unfortunately, I can't turn around to publish and say, give us 40,000 copies of the book. Um, that would be really cool, but we're getting, you know, getting a handful for every guest. So that way, at least you know people have a chance of winning that stuff, and it's all run through a great platform, which we'll talk about on the blog at some stage shortly once we you know really test it and know how it's working and, and how to really maximise that and show you guys what we're doing and how we're using it. But check it out, preneurmarketing.com forward slash wins a really cool um, thing that we're now able to do based on the size of the um, the the community that we've built up over this, these two years and a hundred episodes, which is just awesome. 
Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll continue to look out for the products and services that we use ourselves and we recommend and we'll be looking for opportunities to get you those free trials and subscriber deals and things like that as well as mm -hmm. they pop up. Let's just have a quick look through because um, people have now put in quite a lot of feedback about the their favorite episodes. I think it's safe to say the seven levers in, <laughs> from, from our live audience is pretty much the favorite one, although really good comment here. Um, I also love the seven levers for different professions because it demonstrates its versatility. Mm. Uh, and I've really enjoyed doing those, the, the kind of the if I was episodes where I've, I've challenged you. I mean, I pulled a yoga teacher out of the bag to try and get you the other week, didn't I? Yeah. Um, and, and you still managed to find a great set of um, opportunities to improve those seven areas of the business. Um, somebody very kindly said that they liked my OmniFocus interview. <laughs> kind of you, thank you. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's definitely the seven levers is by far the seems to be the the most powerful and, and impactful episode we've had. So that's going to be and continue to be the core of what we talk about. You know, for a lot of the episodes, you know, we, we might as well touch on now what what the plan is moving forward. Um, obviously, for the first um, part of this calendar year, um, we've both had some some crazy stuff happening. Obviously, family stuff and and bits and pieces. So we sort of went to a uh, an episode every two weeks. Um, just so we can sort of get on top of everything and get our, our processes and workflows in, in place again with those shifts. But now, obviously, um, we're back on track, 100 episodes. We're going to go back to weekly shows, which is uh, super exciting. Uh, and the plan is to basically um, do an episode with Dom and I um, one week, and then the, the following week will be a, a guest with an author or a, a, an expert in a particular area, and then swap that out. So every two weeks it goes back from Dom and I to an interview, Dom and I to an interview, which would be really cool. Uh, and then in obviously the conversations that Dom and I have, I think we're going to have that more of a bent towards the seven levers and really kind of continue that to be the really strong undercurrent of all episodes. So things like a lot more of the If I Was series or other conversations that we have around topics that relate to one or more of those seven levers, which is uh, super exciting. Yeah, and don't forget, folks, you know, we are always on the lookout for any kind of feedback that you folks can give us. But, but specifically, you know, we do ask for you to suggest ideas for the If I Was series or anything else that we do. So if, you, if you're in a particularly odd business and you think, well, I'm not sure how the seven levers would apply to me, then that's your opportunity. Go over to preneurmedia.tv, drop us a line through the comments or the, the audio message or whatever. Um, and we will make an episode all about your specific business. As you've probably heard, you know, um, we have this huge community of people and we regularly get interesting opportunities and lots of different businesses, all kinds of things, uh, online, offline, services based, white collar, all kinds of businesses. Um, and it's great. It's a great challenge. Very interesting for us to, to make those episodes. I particularly enjoy them. I think it's got something to do with seeing you suffer, Pete, but I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> well, in terms of my favorite episodes, um, my, my favorites are obviously the seven levers. Um, I really, one thing, my favorite episode, and I still get tweets and emails about this was the productivity episode um, where I don't want to give it away for people who haven't heard it yet. But it's, it seems to be one of the other most impactful episodes we've ever done that at the time people really enjoy but kind of probably don't think about it because it's not something they actually took away that they uh, probably implement regularly. But it was one of my favourite episodes um, in terms of the feedback we continually get, which is really cool. Uh, the numbers episode, uh, which was in my mind one of the mo most important ones as well, just to remind people what to actually be focusing on and what not to be focusing on. There is a lot of noise out there in marketing and people sort of, do get distracted very, very easily. So the numbers episode, I think, help, you know, again, give people clarity on what they should be focusing on, what they shouldn't be focusing on, which is really cool. Um, interesting. Somebody popped in the uh, in the questions that um, somebody completely unprompted has, has said, yes, if you do email us, we respond, and we do respond personally. Uh, it's something that we say, but it's great for somebody else to come out and actually point that out. But we do absolutely. Anyone who's emailed the show or left a voice message, you'll have got some level of personal response. If it's from Pete, very often you'll actually get an audio response, one of these little cool audio responses. Um, or from me, I very often write you quite a wordy email. Um, so, again, you know, feel free, drop us a line, ask us a question, give us a show idea. Please do. We love the feedback. We really do. 
Um, and I just want to point out something else for me that, that has been great for me personally, because this is something that I did yesterday, uh, and I do it pretty much most of the time. I have my own consulting clients, as you do, Pete, um, for different things. And the other day, I was able to say to somebody, um, I, talk, I talked to them about the concept of zero-based thinking, which okay, is something yep. that you introduced quite a long time ago in a podcast. And I said, we, we recorded that while I was... Uh... I don't need to go into too much detail, because Pete and I did an entire podcast episode on zero-based thinking. And I think, from memory, I think we recorded that while I was uh, in uh, Western was Australia one? a couple of days before the Ironman. Yeah. I think from memory. Probably. Uh, I, I don't know why. Maybe. I just recall myself sitting in a really bad hotel room in Bustledon, Western Australia, about five days before the Ironman recording that episode. Random memory, but that's the memory of that. It, it, there we go. Two years of shows create some very random memories of uh, places we've recorded the show. <laughs> I, I was about to say, summarising it by saying it was sometime around you doing some exercise somewhere random really doesn't help specify at all. <laughs> fair enough, fair okay, enough. Okay, look, let's, we, are, we have got actually got now, people have already started putting their questions in the chat um, for the show. So I think, you know, it's a live show. We're here to answer questions directly. Cool, okay. mate. Well, why, you, um, why people are putting their questions in and, and you sort of um, going through them to work at which ones we're going to ask and get through. I'd love to just reel off quickly some of the other episodes people are saying here they really like. So we've got the 10 Productivity right. Tools episode. That was really cool where you and I just shared the, the actual tools we're using for productivity, which is really cool. Um, yep. We've got um, the morning routine one. Um, that's really cool. That has changed a little bit now that uh, my morning routine, uh, you know, includes diapers and uh, baby bottles. So the morning routine has changed slightly. Um, yeah, the guys do respond. Another win by Preneurcast for the audios. Yep, thanks, guys. Um, the episode where we ran through the books on our desk and shelves. Um, someone's just finished the four-hour work week um, because of that, which is very, very cool. So that's awesome. Um, we should do another one of those because I've, I've had a, a heck of a lot of really cool books this last oh, year. Speaking of cool books, can everyone please go out and buy the audio version of a book called Start? by John Ancuff or Akuf, I think it is. I'm only about three quarters of the way through it, um, but the book is really cool and it's read by the author who's a uh, public speaker and his articulation and reading of that book has to be one of the most engaging listens to an audio book I've heard in a long time. It's a really, really cool book, okay. really, really fun listen, but the actual – Half the enjoyment I'm getting is actually hearing his tonality and his enjoyment and his passion while he actually reads it. It's really, really cool. So so for the people that didn't scribble fast enough, that was? Uh, Start. The book's called Just Start by – actually, let me just open up my iPhone so I can give you exactly the spelling of the guy's surname. I think it's A-C-U-F-F, but let me just double check. Hang on a second. Um, I've got to get out of the uh, the white noise – audio track that's playing on my iPhone at the moment, which we play at night for Eli. And that actually, funnily enough, was suggested to me by a listener. Someone emailed through when we just had Eli saying, hey, here's some books to read and make sure you download these particular audio tracks because the babies really like it and it soothes them. So we've been playing the um, clean white noise tracks with him quite a bit when he sort of gets a bit grisly. Um, so that's really cool. I, you know, A good benefit for me is the listeners as well. Not only are we giving you good stuff, you guys reach out to me, which I really do appreciate. Okay, so the book is called Start, Punch Fear in the Face, Escape Average, and Do Work That Matters. Uh, and the author is John Akuf. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, J-O-N-A-C-U-F-F, which is really cool. Cool. And, and like everything that we talk about in the show, that will be in the show notes, which depending on what you listen to the, the, uh, the episode on, you may not see it directly there's always show notes associated with these files but if you're not sure and you want to check something out always go to preneurmedia.tv and all the show notes will be immediately there ready for you the transcripts take a little bit of time um, after the show goes live and the associated videos and things but the show notes are there straight away mm. okay. um, yeah seven levers leaky pipes episode start as you will go on Omnifocus, seven levers, seven levers, seven levers, uh, and seven told levers. You, told you, told real, you. Real <laughs> waiting towards seven levers. Okay, so I'm going to start you with an easy one, Pete. Okay. Right. I'll do the questions. Um, and this is, this is from Simon Frost, who I believe you know. Hey, who's also a, uh, a, a, a long-distance runner. 
Is he? Yeah, Michelle, Michelle and um, yeah, they, they, they run, um, you know, marathons and half marathons and that sort of stuff. We've gone for a couple of runs when they've been in town. So, oh. yeah. So, guys, if you're ever in Melbourne and uh, up for a run, uh, hit me up. If it, if it fits with the schedule, hey, why not? So, so Simon asks, and this is a great question because it's quite, quite reasonable and legitimate. How does being a new daddy affect your entrepreneurial activities? What adjustments have you had to make to fit a baby into your schedule? <laughs> it has definitely been a, uh, a change to the workflow. Uh, a couple of things, really, I guess. Um, oh, God, where do I start? The, the, well, obviously, you know, things adjusted for the first six months to allow those routines to settle down and stuff like that. So obviously, things like the podcast. Uh, got shifted to a, uh, a fortnightly episode rather than a weekly episode. You know, I know we say that this only takes an hour to record, and it does. We jump online and we, we talk and we, we get offline and, and Dom does the edit. So it's not a lot of time for me, but it's still the, the time we record the show is generally sort of, you know, early morning or late evening um, because of obviously Dom's in beautiful Spain. I'm in uh, currently cold Melbourne. So we, we do these shows at these time frames, And obviously being a parent, like, you know, Eli wakes up in the morning, got to feed him, do the nappy diaper sort of thing, or late at night trying to put him to sleep. So we have sort of juggled that a little bit just to make sure um, it was easy to, to, to fit a schedule. Um, so that was one thing that's changed. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm actually now taking a, a lot more time out of the telco uh, and uh, the Infinity businesses in terms of the office. I, I now only go into the office for the telco and the econ businesses and the, you know, the quote-unquote real-world stuff that I actually do, um, which I know everyone's heard me refer to previously as babysitting, you know, with the staff and stuff. Um, so I'm in the office on Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays now. So uh, I'm working from home on Wednesdays and Fridays, which I, I haven't really done before on a regular basis. So that allows me to sort of, you know, get time of stuff being done. You know, I'm upstairs in my office, so doors closed. I'm, I'm, I'm in work mode, um, which is one thing that's changed a little bit. Um, haven't been doing a lot of training, um, signed up for a, a couple of half uh, Ironmans for early next year. So I'm only starting to get back into training now. So I, I think the first six months was sort of everything was sort of put on hold just so I could actually work out what I could do and what I couldn't do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's different, you know, coming home previously when, you know, Fleur's best friend was uh, was living with us, you know, Fleur had someone to hang out with all the time who's been her best friend since she was, you know, a teenager. So I'd be able to come home do the family thing with dinner and then go upstairs to my office and get work done and, 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 you know, do all that sort of stuff knowing Fleur was, you know, not being looked after. That sounded like a terrible term, but you know, that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, now it's like, you know, got to come home. When I am home, it is family, baby, nothing else. Very rarely do work at home at nights anymore. So if I need to get something done, I'll, I'll stay in the office until it's done and then I'll laptop off. You know, it is playtime, baby time until I go to bed. So that's kind of a, a different shift. So it's more about just, you know, priorities have changed in terms of, um, you know, uh, less time in the office doing that sort of stuff so I can actually have more uninterrupted time uh, doing that sort of stuff. So I don't know. Hopefully that's some sort of value for people there. Um, you know, nothing major takeaway, just a, a shuffle of priorities and a shuffle of, uh, you know, positive constraints, i.e. not being in the uh, in the office. Cool. Okay. I just thought it was relevant and topical. Speaking of relevant and topical, um, Deborah from Melbourne has asked me a question, uh, which should be a relatively quick answer. Um, I recommended the particular headphones that I use because they um, seal out external noise. They're a particular brand called Shaw, um, and they literally kind of stick themselves inside of your ears and seal out the outside noise. And Deborah asked if there was another recommendation because she was said that they would be uncomfortable and hard to insert. By the way, they're not, but different people have different have different responses to these things. You really do have to try them. Um, you get all kinds of different fixtures with these things. But but to come back to something, Peter, you just mentioned, before I had my my noise blocking headphones, what I would do, and something so still something I do now, is um, I would use white noise. You can get software or tracks, audio tracks already pre-recorded that generate white noise. Now, there's all kinds of different versions of this, but basically it sounds a bit like static hiss from a radio um, in its simplest form. But you would be amazed how much this helps your concentration just with a regular set of headphones. Having that white noise playing it, it, it drowns out everything else that's going on. It really does help if you're in a distracting environment. Um, 
just it, it for some reason and i'm sure there's some science behind it which i haven't really looked into it just i used to find it really really helpful when i worked in a busy environment to have this white noise just on regular headphones nothing special or technical Can so I also, maybe that will help Pete, are you using a particular app for yours well uh, no it's just a uh, the what i'm using for the phone is just an audio track that i downloaded from itunes like 99 cents app but something that's that's i've been suggested and we actually use it in the office occasionally um it started off as a bit of a piss take uh we actually do use it now productivity wise is a website called coffee activity so c o double f i t i v i t y so coffeeativity.com and what that is it's really weird it's it plays ambient sounds from a coffee shop <laughs> and like, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the page about the science behind how this actually helps and stuff like that so basically what you can do is you just play um this ambient coffee lounge sort of hustle and bustle in the background so it sort of feels like you're in an environment with other people going around it's not distracting music that you sing along to but it's some sort of sound that kind of gives you that ambient background that um is apparently meant to boost your workday creativity so we've been playing with it in the office um really cool something just funky and a bit different i'll put that in the show notes andrew says he totally agrees with me uh white noise or even pink noise can be great so yep. some feedback from the What's community pink noise that's cool it's a variant of white noise Okay. That's probably the least technical answer I've ever given in my entire life. Yeah. Well, someone's saying the Mozart effect really helped them. So, uh, for those who don't know what that actually means, go back and listen to the productivity episode that we had early on in the uh, the series of shows here, because uh, that kind of that definitely links into that, and I think it made a huge difference to a lot of people. Yeah. Yep. Andrew Andrew recommends simplynoise.com. I'll put that in the um, in the show notes for people. Cool um okay so let's let's go for something a little bit more challenging um pete this is this is something that's that is uh something that we don't do a lot about but i would like to just see if you've got a, a kind of a quick answer to this um this is for someone jason jason matthias um has asked for someone getting started in online business what are the most powerful business models and what's the best sequence to build or approach them in? And the examples he gives are things like affiliate marketing, membership sites, training, coaching, consulting, things like that. Now, I know this is something that, that you and I have been talking about a little bit recently, so maybe you yeah. got a little bit of feedback on that? Yeah, it, it might end up being a little bit of a rant, but let me, let me before I get on my soapbox, um, just touch on a couple of things. I've actually been working with a, a couple of writers to help put together what I'm currently terming the definitive guide to online business models because I think the issue that's been raised there is actually a serious issue because I, we talk to so many people now that, you know, obviously um, the more we sort of do stuff online, the more p online marketers kind of get to be part of our community, which is, which, is a, which is a good thing and happy to sort of support them and give them advice. But the problem is, is that there's no such thing as internet marketing. Saying you're an internet marketer, as I've said before, is the biggest load of crap ever. You have to know what your business model is, and the internet is just a path to market. So, you know, affiliate marketing is the business, not internet marketing. Uh, consulting is the business model, not internet marketing. Um, you know, being a writer is the business model. Like someone who sells ebooks online classes themselves as an internet marketer. That's absolutely crap. You're an author. It's a huge distinction. So I'm writing a whole you know, big book around this sort of different business models and, and that sort of stuff to help people get real clarity of what your core business model is and then you use the internet as a way to market those products and services. So that's sort of one quick sort of thing without going too ranty about it. You know, to answer the question though, look, it, it comes down to what your skill set is. You know, If you're trying to start a business just to make money because you need to make money, it really isn't the best model. Trying to go out, go after a business model that's going to give you the best revenue doesn't exist. If you look at the, you know, the top richest people in the world, or even the people who are making two hundred grand a year, or even seventy five thousand dollars a year, I read a, or watched a really interesting documentary about two weeks ago called Happy. Um, just Happy, that's the name of it, and it talks about some seriously in depth studies that have been done, and they've found that the happiness level of people who are earn $75,000 is significantly more than people who earn, you know, 30, 40 or 50,000. dollars But once you earn 70,000 $75,000 a year, the happiness level that you have between that and 200,000 and a million dollars a year 
is absolutely very negligible. It actually makes no difference, which is which was surprising to a lot of people, but it's absolutely fact. So I think people should be aiming towards making $75,000 a year as their first goal, and then after that, look at trying to build Facebook. So what I'm saying, though, is that if you look at people who are earning 100 grand a year, 200 grand a year, a million dollars a year, they're all doing it with different business models. You know, you could be a wholesaler selling pharmaceuticals. You could be a information marketer. You could run a used car lot. You can run a mechanic. There's so many different ways to make money. So trying to say what money, what business model is going to make me the most money is just a counterintuitive wrong way to look at it. Um, it should be, what is your skill set and how do you monetize that skill set? What is your passion? How can I best monetize that passion? That's the, the true answer that I, I suggest people really think and, and look and, and strive for. Unfortunately, that's not the answer people want. People want, hey, go and do this. Yeah, because we're, we're not here to give people the answer that they want. I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, a lot of these these things are, are what are called opportunities, business opportunities, and people that follow them along are referred to as opportunity seekers. Um, and another term for them is arbitrage. And arbitrage basically refers to anything that works right now but probably won't work later. Mm. Um, that's not a business. <laughs> it's an opportunity, but it's not a business. Um, and and so, you know, back to that initial point that you made, and you said it was a rant, but it's one of the first things I ever heard you say. Uh, before we actually met, I saw you speak, and one of the first things I ever heard you say in, in, a, in one of your, your speeches at a conference was about the internet being a path to market. Okay, and this actually leads us into the, into the next question, um, a question from Andrew. Before you go, there, can I, can I, make more, I just want to make one more point. F finish your point, but before we go to the next question, I want to make one more quick yeah, point. Yeah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm just going to say this, but but the, the point is that a, a business model is a business model, but affiliate marketing or membership sites or whatever are just another kind of path to market for your skill or your product or your business. Yeah. Hmm. They're not businesses, and I think that that's kind of what you're trying to say there, but, but saying it slightly differently. Um, and and we could probably give some recommendations on how you might market using the internet a particular business, which is what the next question is about. So, Pete, what did you want to say? Um, I was going to say I'll slightly disagree with you there that I do think affiliate marketing can be a business model in itself. I think you know membership sites, oh, yes, consulting. It can. That sort of stuff is a is a path to market and monetizing a skill set. But I think affiliate marketing can potentially be a business model. The one issue I do see, and it I, can, yeah, I, I want to make a suggestion to, to sort of answer the question that they want to hear. I'm a bit reluctant to do that, obviously, because it's not the, the 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 correct answer you really need to have, but it's what you want to hear. So I'm going to try and answer them both together. I do think a good way to start out using the internet to make money. Let's sort of get this very clear and make sure we use the right language here, is a model that Pat Flynn used. Now, I'm not saying everyone else should go out and exactly rip off what Pat did, but I think Pat has one of the best um, integrity-based businesses going around. Pat started off um, doing you know, this quote-unquote internet marketing thing, um, basically being an information publisher. So he'd, he was creating ebooks and, and content in, in different niches. Um, you know, I think it was security was one of them or whatever it might be, like how-to kind of stuff, and was monetizing that as his business. But then he also started this website where he actually, you know, openly said, hey, I'm starting out. I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to blog and talk about my journey as I learn this. And I'm going to share some stuff I'm learning along the way, and hopefully you can too. So as he wrote that, he's not turning around saying, hey, I am a guru, I'm experienced. Because nothing pisses me off more than seeing people out there buying a course on how to make money online and then they just suddenly start teaching how to make money online. It's just an absolute pyramid scheme and it pisses me off because there's no integrity in what you're selling and you wonder why you're not making any friggin' money because internally most people realize that they're doing the wrong thing, that there's no integrity in what they're selling and what they're saying so they don't push hard enough and work the extra hours because they feel some sort of unease inside them, which is why they don't succeed. And we should probably do an episode on that, Dom. Can you make a note about this? It's going to be a ranty episode, but I think it needs to be said in this market. But cool. going out there and saying, hey, I don't know about this. I'm trying to learn it. Come along with my journey. I'm going to blog about it. And while you're blogging, saying, hey, this is a tool I found that I'm going to test out, and here's the affiliate link for it. You can make money that way 
which is a great way to do it. So it is affiliate marketing in a particular industry or space, but the way and the language you learn and you use is a lot more uh, congruent with a lot more integrity and your audience will, will, will prefer that for you and they will support you. And more importantly, you will have more um, confidence in yourself because you're not trying to be somebody you're not. So many people online who are trying to make online businesses work, quote, unquote, do so and they're trying to be someone they're not. They're trying to be um, a, a guru or an expert when they're not and they wonder why they're not willing to work that extra hour, get up that hour earlier, follow through, continually getting distracted by cats on YouTube and Facebook. It's because they know in, internally in their heart that they're not being, in, not being true to themselves, so why would they work extra hard? And that's why most people fail with this quote-unquote internet marketing thing. All right, rant over. Um, Josh, to answer Josh's <laughs> question, um, Pat Flynn, F L Y double N, um, really cool. Um, but you know, do you think drop shipping? Uh, to me, I think drop shipping is great. You know, look, one of the biggest revenue generators f for me and my businesses is a e-commerce site. So selling physical products, I absolutely believe in because that is my core revenue stream. You know, this is the thing is like I'm telling you exactly what I do. Everyone, you know, who listens to the show knows about simplyheadsets.com.au, which is, you know, the biggest e-commerce site that we have in our group of, of websites and, and businesses. And that's a, you know, a multi-million dollar business selling physical goods. So I'm a big believer in in e-commerce selling physical goods for sure. So, you know, taking that drop shipping approach and, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're probably referring to Ezra's product and course that came out uh, recently. I think it's a great um, business model. Absolutely. It's, it's what I do. You know, that, that is the core focus. I'm not an information marketer. I podcast because I enjoy it and share some courses and speak because I enjoy it. It's far, far, far from the core revenue. You know, it is physical phone systems and e-commerce stuff that is what I do as a business person. Yeah, and, you know, as we've mentioned before, and it's, it is well worth highlighting, you know, in your little rant there, you say, you regularly say you don't, you can't get on with people that, that put themselves forward as gurus because they've read a, read a book or watched a course or whatever. And, you know, one of the, one of the positions that we take very strongly on this podcast is the fact that you are absolutely a real world business person. I am too. I don't, you know, run the same number of or scale of businesses that you do, but I'm certainly in business and I'm going through the challenges and discussing these topics from, you know, from a position of, of uh, for, certainly in some cases I'd like to know myself um, or, or, you know, I've experienced it myself and, and you certainly have a lot more experience because of these real world businesses, which hopefully brings value to the content. So going back to a real business and a, uh, and a way of working that forward, Andrew has asked, um, he's a training and consultancy company um, that has gained business on the back of a key figure in the in the company, who's his wife, uh, through her personality and her specialist knowledge. Um, she's incredibly popular. People are happy to travel just to listen to her speak and teach. However, she's hitting that barrier, which is she can only be in one place at a time. So there's an absolute limit to the the, the scale of the business and the limit to what they can earn and, and business they can generate. So they're trying to think of ways to utilize the, this personality and knowledge and reach a wider audience without diluting the message through what some people do, which is that they train up like consultants. Yeah. I've seen quite a lot of this recently uh, where people have said, oh, yes, come, come and join my program and one of the consultants will talk to you. Mm. And they don't want to go that way. So they're looking at organizing an online course. Do we have any advice suggesting direction yeah uh, i think that's with, a much better way to go you know I, I don't know the intricate yeah. details and i could get this wrong but i think actually that, that's an issue i believe tony robbins faced uh, a few years ago when he actually tried to to leverage out the unleash the power within weekends where he actually um got facilitators to, to, to run those weekends and it just from my understanding backfired now i could be wrong don't don't sort of quote me on that one or anything. That's my understanding. So I, I do agree that I think, you know, getting other people to, to represent you can potentially be a bad thing. There's ways where franchising works. Um, in, you know, Brad Sugars did it exceptionally well with action business coaching. Um, so there's definitely ways to do that as long as you start, you know, branding it. It's, the business is, is, is more than just you. That, that takes a bit of a shift. So that's a, a bigger play. But I, I do think this is where the internet can come in and help you is actually give you that that path to market in a much more leveraged way. And this is a smart way to use the internet. 
So you are, you know, still being true to your business model, which is consulting and supporting whatever it is that you, it actually is that your wife does. And you can start using the internet to build up that brand, that positioning, and have a one-to-many reach. So, you know, starting that blog, starting that podcast, doing, you know, looking at uh, Marie Folio and seeing what she's done with, you know, video, using video quite regularly because it's a personality and, it's a, and, and it is that, you know, um, face coming through the computer screen and then off the back of that you can do the membership site the group coaching uh, where it sort of is a one-to-many delivery so rather than doing one-on-one coaching which you can do over skype you know you know i'll take on a couple of clients here and there but you know the, the group coaching stuff works a lot more effectively because it is still that one-to-many scenario where you get you know six people uh in a, in a group you jump online for an hour and a half every you know, week or, or fortnight with your, your consulting clients. Uh, it's more cost effective for them. It's easier for you and your wife to deliver the service. You spend the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes of that group session teaching, using, educating, and then everyone gets a 15 minute focus time in that session. That kind of stuff works exceptionally well to leverage the internet. You can have clients all across the country, all across the world. Um, so take that same enthusiasm and message and then use the internet as a way to, to reach out with that. So, you know, finding other people who talk about similar topics that your wife does and start, you know, giving some of that content that people love as guest posts, as exclusive videos for their websites, and then start building up that brand, that positioning online, driving them back to some sort of website where you can capture their details and then monetize that through a membership site, through this group coaching sort of stuff. I think that's a, a much smarter way than um, going down the path of, of, you know, replicating that. I'm assuming that the consulting stuff can be done through a uh, Skype connection or a go-to webinar or a go-to media or something like that, that it's not like a consulting masseuse type role where you've got to be physically there touching the person, that it just can be facilitated that way. And, you know, most things can be done these days with a, you know, a screen cam, you know, go-to meeting, Citrix uh, alternative product to go-to webinar that we're using for today's podcast allows you and the other people in that conversation to share a computer screen and share webcams. So you can see everybody and see their facial expressions and have those conversations. It works exceptionally well. Cool. And just a kind of one bullet point where you said and to add a little tiny bit to it, um, definitely the way what you presented there was a path of increasing complexity with a really easy start point. Um, and this is something that, again, speaking to everybody, you know, um, you'll have heard me a couple of times recently talking about a book called The, the Lean Startup book. Uh, it's, a, it's not a new book, but it's a book I think that pretty much everybody should read because it, it encourages you to do the minimum you need to do to find out if what you're doing is going to work. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of people would leap straight at, for example, membership site, online training courses. Now, small tiny little reference to my own business or one of my businesses one of my businesses is, is creating online training courses it's a speciality of mine um so this is my specialist subject but i wouldn't recommend that people jump straight in to creating a course when you can go through this path that pete just laid out which is you start off you could blog and as we have done here very very simply create a podcast this is all growing the audience and the authority um, to, uh, out to a wider circle and communicating with that potential client base. You could even publish maybe a digital a digital book, um, which is something that just sits there and you can either give it away or you can sell it through all the digital book platforms or through a website. Um, and then, yeah, you can use all these technologies like GoToWebinar or Skype video chat on, on a one-to-one -one mm -hmm. model to reach audiences further and further away. And then you can build up to this idea of collecting the knowledge into these targeted and focused online courses. Um, so, I mean, great. It was a great answer, Pete. I think hopefully, Andrew, you got something from that. Um, right. Okay. Andrew, Andrew said he's, uh, he really feel that they need to take a solid, but they are being approached by someone to create a series of courses from them. Uh, Andrew, um, I don't like pimping, but if you have a, if you contact me through support, I might be able to help you with that. That's all I will say. Um, so that was a, that was a, an example of somebody who has an existing business model, a body of knowledge, and they want to use the internet to move it forward. Um, and so we give a really huge pile of options there. Um, 
just while everybody's brain cools down from <laughs> from that, um, but somebody uh, Deborah actually has just has asked um, another question, um, which is that she refers back to an episode about managing expectations, the one that I talked about with the mm. uh, the funeral director, and about where businesses assume that clients already understand the process that's going to happen, but that really it's it's your duty to explain what's going to happen to them. And she had an interesting experience, which is worth discussing, even if it's briefly. Um, she was discussing with a client as a graphic designer, and his view was that the type of clients he wanted wouldn't need such clarification because he only wanted to work with clients who understood exactly what they were expecting. I have a response to that. Uh, twofold response. Uh, the first one is if it's a new client, they have no idea what you're going to do. Uh, and really, you don't want people coming to you thinking that they know what you're going to do because that can really cause a, a, a big mismatch in expectations, which you need to clarify. But the second and more positive thing to that is that it is an opportunity for you to differentiate yourself by doing this. And that's really where we were coming from with that episode, Pete, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that by going through and explaining to people what you do and how you do it is an opportunity to really demonstrate to people your professionalism, the scope of your service, and differentiate yourself from those other people um, in your marketplace. So it's it's a positive thing in all cases from from my point of view. I mean, yeah, Deborah I think, says in, in, in a, a comment that she she believes it was it's a positive thing. But oh, I think I think it's a must have because you know there's the the way I read that question is that the they they think and they they understand that the client knows the process. Now the process is different from expectations. This is a big thing that hopefully people took away from that episode is that you know the process of graphic design is you know we're going to sit down we're going to do the brief and we're going to do this go back and forth like the process itself the linear process you know it can be known by the client you know um, someone's going to come and mow my lawns. And do my gardening like that's a pretty i know what he's going to do he's going to come and get the lawnmower off the back of his truck and mow my lawn but there's still expectations around that of you know how, how's he going to do it is he, going to, is he going to trim this what's the time it's going to take what's you know you still need to manage the expectation because you know one process the way you do a process is very very different you know if i said to someone oh, i'm going to go run a marathon people understand what the marathon is but saying i'm going to run a marathon that gets me into the olympics is a very different expectation to i'm going to actually potentially walk half of it because I'm, I'm big and fat and slow you know, so like the process is the same, running from one point to the other point across a course over 42 kilometres, that's the process. The expectation of when am I going to eat, how am I going to eat, how fast am I going to move, what's my split time, am I going to positive or negative split it, that kind of stuff is the expectation you need to manage. Now, it's probably a pretty poor example, but you still need to manage the expectation, not just the process. And that's, from what I read in that question is, I think the person they're talking about thinks the client understands the process, but they don't need to manage the expectation. They're two very similar, but extremely different things. Yeah. But it, it, it still comes down to this, this uh, th there's, there's multiple reasons for doing it, and it's all about that managing that expectation, really, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Um, now, I have another question. This is, this is absolutely hot topic for us. Uh, you're going you're gonna to love this one. Um, this is Adam in the UK. A regular listener of Preneurcast, best part of a year now. Been using our advice and developing a small outsourcing team. Well awesome. done, Adam. Don't do the work yourself. Work on your business, not in your business. Great stuff. However, cliche I find after cliche, I love it, Tom. Just, just following your example. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, I find that the quality of many of the contractors. Um, on the sites where he's finding the people can vary a lot. And sometimes people seem to apply for jobs. They aren't really capable of doing properly. Absolutely. Also, some of the contractors will string out simple tasks over many hours when they should take only a short time. Absolutely. Do you have any advice or tips on how to find reliable quality subcontractors? Uh, yeah, it's a two day lecture and session that Dave Jennings and I did all about how we've built our teams. Um, so, you know, it's hard to sort of answer, you know, 16 hours worth of content that Dave and I have shared in, in, a, in a quick podcast response. But let me give the quick top level stuff. Firstly, don't use Elance or Odesk for full time staff. You know, that you have to think about the mentality of that person. So, that a person who goes to Elance and Odesk, you know, their mentality, no matter where they're from in the country or the world or wherever it might be, They've got this mentality of, you know, needing to maximize that job because I don't have another job tomorrow necessarily. 
or they're going to get halfway through your job and need to secure the next job to make sure they can put money and food and stuff on the table for their family next week. So their outcome is different from yours um, in that respect. So if you're going to hire someone full-time, hire someone from a place where they're going to look for full-time work. Now, obviously, in Australia, it's seek.com.au. In the US, it's maybe Monster or Yahoo Jobs. Um, And obviously, in various countries, Philippines, India, they have their own respective job places where someone who wants a full-time job goes. People who want a full-time job don't go to Elance or Odesk. They're contractors for individual tasks. So they're out taskers. So that's the first tip. If you want someone who's going to be reliable for long-term employment, go to a place where where that's the context in which they're looking for a job. That's the first thing. Secondly, um, for one-off jobs, you are much better off paying a slight premium because you know you know that person's going to be good because otherwise you're going to get strung along for someone doing extra hours. That, that's a big thing. Um, also, getting them to set expectations uh, up front um, and saying, like, how long is this job going to take? You know, a four-hour job? Okay, great. I'll pay for four hours. Uh, and then, you know, just be up front with them saying, okay, well, if it takes six hours – What's going to happen? How are we going to deal with this? Because obviously, you know, I'm paying you as an expert to do this, so you should have an expert's advice and opinion on how long it's going to take. You know, get fixed quotes for stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's a much better way to go. Um, you know, I'm more and more avoiding places like Elance and Odesk and looking for referrals uh, unless I'm finding someone with a huge rating, a lot of hours on that platform that you can actually know is, is trustworthy. L- really look at their history. Someone who hasn't had jobs before or very little jobs or learnt, you know, earned very little money, you know, that, that, that says a lot. Don't don't be the guinea pig for them. Let them find someone else less educated who doesn't listen to the Preneurcast to um, trial. Always go to people who have more experience uh, and pay that slight premium for it because it's better in the long run. Great tip. Great tip. Um, I just want to, like, really, again, don't like pimping, but I really, really have to say, folks, if you're interested in outsourcing, which you should be uh, for getting things done, um, Completely independently, because Pete and Dave Jennings put that outsource is it outsource profit machine course together. Yeah. Um, independently of me, wasn't involved in it in any way. Not sore about that. Um, but but I've watched that entire course. It's two solid days of um, a presentation that they did, which is their insider knowledge on just everything they know about outsourcing. Now, bear in mind that both Dave and Pete run multiple businesses with multiple, multiple, multiple members of staff all over the world doing all kinds of stuff. They really, really know their stuff. And the, the, some of the tips, you know, I mean, five minutes of listening to that changed the way that I handle a lot of my own business, let alone some of the, you know, the more advanced stuff that they do. It was a fab- fabulous, fabulous thing. So if you have an opportunity to study that course, if you're into if you're thinking of going into outsourcing or you're already struggling with it, I can recommend it. Um, completely not being paid by Pete to say this. Yeah. Can, I, can I actually make a suggestion though, mate? Um, if, if, if people are interested in, in, in the outsourcing course, don't buy it right now. Uh, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but Ooh, the, 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 the current version that's available is only the first day of the workshop. We did another a, a second full day this year, um, and we're probably <laughs> – we've been about two weeks away from releasing it for about four months. We just need to record the sales video, um, and we've just been slack about it. So that should be up and out, I'd say, in two or three weeks. So if you're on the, the Preneur Marketing newsletter list, which I'm assuming most of you probably are, if not, head over to preneurmarketing.com and sign up. Um, and uh, there'll be some emails about that when it comes out, and it's going to be crazy cheap where, you know, we, we realise it, it's not about making money for us. It's going to be uh, a extremely low price point for 16 hours worth of content. So don't buy it yet. Just keep an eye out for that because you'll get both editions um, probably at a very similar price point, if not cheaper than the first version is available right now. So a bit of a heads up on that one. Cool. So so keep your eye on your email boxes, as those internet marketing people say. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> cool. Great. But no, no, there's some great tips there, Pete. I mean, as I say, it's that's an example of, of the depth of your knowledge that you can you can kind of give some really powerful stuff in such a short space of time. Um, we are actually coming close to what would be the normal episode length at this point, Pete. We're like mm. we've been running for nearly an hour now. Awesome. Um, it's flown by, um, and we we do have like we have a pile of questions that are coming through. People are dropping things all the time. 
How can, can we eke, eke one more question out, people? Yeah, you've well, got, you've got well, let's do this. Maybe, time, yeah, I've got plenty of stuff at the back to back um, meetings today, unfortunately. It's a bit of a crazy day for me. So, what we could do is obviously, if anyone's got any extra questions they want to have us answer on the podcast, throw them into the chat box right now and then. Dom and I can record answers to those uh, and get them out for a, uh, maybe a follow-up episode in a couple of weeks' time. We can sort of have the, the, the part two or the after-hours sessions, but we'll answer all your questions, just probably not live, unfortunately. We'll, we'll go and uh, do that um, offline for another episode. So we'll still make sure we answer everyone's questions. It just won't be live on this episode. So if you're listening to this episode and really enjoying the Q&A, um, check out episode in, in, a, in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll follow up with all the other questions we've got. But, yeah, we can definitely squeeze in another question. We have one question, and it's excellent, actually. Hopefully, you can give a quick answer. Uh, I have also some feedback for this person because uh, there's somebody who sent us an email previously. This is Dave, um, Dave Collins, and Dave asks, um, do you have any tips for getting more conversions on a website where the business is an expensive service? Now, in this, is, uh, in this case, it's higher-end video production, which can be very expensive, as I know myself. Um, mm. Pete, any input? Yeah, I, I think there's a few things. I think, you know, one thing that, again, this whole quote-unquote internet marketing community preaches is that, you know, you need to get an email address. That, that's the opt-in you need. But I really do believe that, and we've spoken about this so many times, um, and, you know, obviously, you know, in the telco business, Infinity that we run, you know, we sell phone systems there, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar solutions, you know, all the way down to two or three thousand dollars for a small business. So, you know, we're not going to get an opt in for a, a free report. Like that's just stupid. It doesn't work like that. Because we know the the, the long time the, the lifetime value of our clients. We know the the margins what we're willing to pay to acquire a client and how much effort we're willing to get a conversion. You know, the opt in can be a phone call. And you know, if you're a high production, you know, video company where you're selling ten, fifteen thousand dollar solutions for people your opt-in should be a 20-minute consultation. That should be what your opt-in is because, you know, nothing sells better than face-to-face. -face. Nothing's going to get you a conversion like a face-to-face -face conversation. And if you sell, you know, the reason you use the internet is to give you leverage to reach the masses at a lower um, conversion rate. But, you know, this is the thing that, get, that confuses so many people is like that doesn't mean, it, mean it's the best way to actually make a conversion. It's not. The best way to make a conversion for anything, no matter what you're selling, whether it's a $2 ebook or a $200,000 video production, is a face-to-face -face conversation. Now, obviously, you know, at a $2 ebook level, the numbers don't work for that. You, it just doesn't economically work for you to do that. But for a $5,000 or $2,000 profit video production, have that 20-minute conversation with people. So the opt-in should be, you know, want a free conversation with one of our team members about some ways you can do this yourself or have us do it for you. Call us now. Request a free consultation. So that would be what the opt-in should be in my, in my opinion. It shouldn't necessarily be about first trying to build this list. It should be about getting the conversion. So what's the best way to get a conversion? Get on the phone with a prospect. So have, you know, request a quote type functionality where it's a bit of a survey um, on your website. Um, ask them to pick up the phone and call you is a very easy way to get an opt-in. Because remember, as we spoke about in Seven Levers, an opt-in doesn't necessarily mean an email subscriber. For a retail store, an opt-in is someone going into the change room and trying on that dress. That is the opt-in. You know, the opt-in is different for every business model. So that's the first lesson. And I think it is should be about picking up the phone call. So, you know, white papers can work, but again, you know, not really. When someone's going to be making a $2,000 expense, they're not there for information. They're there to actually make a purchase. So help them make that purchase. That's the difference with, you know, people coming to this internet marketing world with a quote-unquote real-world business like a video production company. You know, trying to mould that, you know, how to make money selling an ebook business model to that doesn't work. The foundation and the concepts work, but the execution has to be different. So the execution is not opt-in for a free ebook. The execution is pick up the friggin' phone and speak to me so I can sell you. Don? Really good point, mate. Really good point. I mean, it's it, it's overlooked, very much overlooked. I mean, when we do consulting work um, in our you know mastermind groups and things like that, we we review people's websites, um, you know, which is something that we, that we do for people. One of the first things we say is, "What is your goal? What is what is your opt-in?" Going back to the seven levers, everything comes back to seven levers. What is your opt-in? 
And if your opt-in is that you need them to contact you, you need to you know get get that face to face or a voice based contact, then you you you're asking them to ring you. Um, then our, usually our initial response in any given situation where somebody says, "Can you review my website?" will be, "Where's your phone number then?" Yep. Because it's usually missing off the <laughs> off the front page of the website in the top right hand corner. Um, you know, simple, simple, simple stuff. But it's 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 a uh, some pe people get hung up that with this idea that the internet is magic and things just happen. Mm. Um, it, Great it's, point. It's still a path to market for a business. Business rules and marketing rules apply. Again, podcast we've talked about this before. You know, everything we talk about has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. The example you gave was uh, was the the book about Houdini mm -hmm. um, and how Houdini was using marketing. Um, you know, at the turn of the century. Uh, the techniques that, that people now are, are bringing out going, this is revolutionary on the internet. It's not revolutionary on the internet. It's, <laughs> it's been around for a hundred year plus years, you know, go and read a book. Um, folks, we are at time. So as Pete said, just while I'm wrapping up the show, if we didn't get to your question, but you desperately want that question answering, Pete and I will endeavor to answer it in one of our recorded podcasts in the next few weeks um, to get that answer to you or we will get in touch with you somehow, but preferably on a podcast. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure today to do this. It, it's a celebration because it's the 100th show, but it's been even more enjoyable to have everyone on here live, interacting with you live, helping you, answering your questions, um, and just, just really being in the community that we know is there. You know, there's this huge community the preneur community listeners to the podcast we know you're out there we get your feedback through the different you know through preneurmedia.tv through itunes but having you guys live and chatting with us has been just a pleasure and an honor absolutely it's been amazing 100 episodes two and a half years it doesn't feel it's taken that long to get here it's been amazing so again as dom said Really do appreciate every one of you. Uh, as we said at the start of the show and people have mentioned in the comments, you know, for those who do reach out, we do take the time because we appreciate you to reply personally uh, with audio or email. So, again, thanks, uh, you all. It's been uh, an awesome journey and it's, you know, it's just beginning, as they say in the classics. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, listening, anyone listening at home to this recording, as always, uh, the show notes are on PremierMedia.tv where you can get the download, the transcripts, the show notes. You can leave us feedback as a comment below the post or with a little audio button that's on the side of, this, on the, side of the page. You may have come to us through iTunes. Please do, if you enjoy the show, leave us an iTunes review. Um, we really appreciate those because it helps other people discover the show. And starting next week, we will be going weekly. So uh, listen out for our next show, and we'll see you all soon. See you, guys and girls. Love you all. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PrinterCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at printermedia.tv or drop them a line via printercast at printergroup.com.